Hello, everyone. My name is Alexa Ernst. My name is Zachary Drouillard. And my name is John Gracie. And today we will be presenting our model, Formula for Success, and sharing the modeling process we followed for problem C of this year's semi ode challenge. For this problem, we were provided a series of clips in which Fritz the dog tries and fails to catch various foods thrown to him. From these clips, we created a differential equations model that tracks the motion of food as a projectile object and relates it to Fritz's motion as he jumps up to intercept it. To do this, we examined both kinematic and biological aspects of this problem. The various forces acting on Fritz and the food in motion, but also traits of Fritz that impact his ability to catch, such as his reaction time. There were several questions we had to answer in the design of our model. First and foremost, how did the initial conditions of a thrown food influence its path? Then we had to consider the effects of air resistance while the object is airborne. To answer how air resistance influences projectile motion, we used 3D models of certain foods that were thrown at Fritz and estimated their drag coefficients. An overarching question we sought to answer was whether Fritz's inability to catch was due to human or canine error. In order to know what variables and rates of change would need to be considered for our model, we began by making the following assumptions. First is that Fritz's motion allows a vertical path. In the video provided, the dog's motion as he jumps for the food is almost entirely vertical, allowing us to neglect changes in horizontal position. We also assume that the effect of spin on the food's motion is small enough to be reasonably neglected. Air resistance is also negligible for objects whose speed and size are relatively large compared to the density of air, allowing us to model Fritz's motion without air resistance. Finally, based on the video, we assume that the food is thrown directly in Fritz's direction. Three different foods were selected to be first 3D modeled and then ran through wind tunnel simulations in a computational fluid dynamics software. The foods picked included the hot dog, the donut, and the strawberry. Their calculated drag coefficients are given, found from the total frontal area of the object, the density of air at standard temperature and pressure, the velocity relative to the fluid, as well as the drag force found from the wind tunnel test. As can be seen, the strawberry ranked the lowest, followed by the donut, and then the hot dog having the highest drag coefficient. Multiple implications arise from these results. If a food has a higher drag coefficient, that means that it will encounter a higher drag force and decelerate to a greater extent than one with a lower drag coefficient. This could work to the advantage of Fritz, who will then have a greater amount of time to react and catch the food. On the other hand, there is a trend with the given foods that the larger the food, the larger the coefficient of drag. If a larger food is thrown at Fritz, he may have trouble biting down on it, down on all of it, and keeping possession. On the other hand, a smaller food could be easier to catch because he can bite down on it and not lose it, but it is also a smaller and faster traveling object. The answer to what food is optimal in this case for Fritz is to, is to catch is not so cut and dry, and a balance must be struck between food size and food speed of travel. To tailor our model to Fritz, we utilized video analysis to come up with a fixed reaction time for the dog, as well as a fixed value for the initial angle and velocity of the food. We selected three different clips from the video. Reaction time was found by counting the number of frames that it takes for Fritz to begin his motion up toward the food, then dividing this by the frame rate and the slow motion speed of the recording. Fritz's initial velocity was found by timing the dog's entire jump, then substituting that value of time into the equation for vertical position of a projectile and solving for V-naught. The initial velocity of the food was found using a simple distance over time formula for which we estimated the height of each food so that we would have a measurable distance for our calculation. All three of these calculations were done for all three selected video clips and the mean value of each was used in our model. For this problem, we used two different differential equations to model the relationship between the path of food and the path of Fritz. For the first model, we compared time and height in order to factor in reaction time to the differential equation, which compared to the model you'll see later, which looks at the position of X and the position of Y. For this model, we based it off of a mechanics kinematics projectile motion equation. However, we only looked at it in the y direction since we wanted to have time as a dependent variable. And because based on the Fritz catching compilations, he didn't move a lot in the videos in the x directions. So we were able to neglect that variable. So if you look at the variables here, we have um, the second derivative of y, which is vertical acceleration. Uh, first derivative, which is vertical velocity of the object, and then the vertical position of the uh, object. And then our constants, we have A representing the cross-sectional area of the objects, uh, the density of fluid in which the object is moving, the mass of the object, the acceleration due to gravity, and the drag coefficient. And those are the factors that go into this differential equation. And then for Fritz's motion, our equation is the standard kinematics equation for vertical position of a projectile object. 
but we had to account for a time delay due to Fritz's reaction time. To incorporate this, T minus 0.188 was substituted for T, representing the 0.188 second duration that passes as Fritz reacts to the food being thrown to him. For the realistic model, this shows the change in vertical position of Fritz and the food with respect to time. From this model, we can use the position equations of projectile motion to infer the horizontal position at which Fritz and the food cross path vertically. In this model, we see that Fritz spends very little time in close proximity to the food. This means he has very little time to catch the food, which explains his low success rate. Based on Fritz's jumps from the compilation, we know that he jumps almost straight up and down and doesn't move much in the x directions. For an optimized model, the parameters of Fritz's jump will be fixed such that Fritz follows a path most similar to that of the projectile food. That is, his launch angle will be as close as possible to the angle the food makes with the ground as its path reaches an end. We estimate this angle to be in the 45 to 50 degree range based on the videos. Our team tested various values for each initial condition and concluded that these values make for the best possible jump in order for Fritz to catch the food. All parameters for the food here were fixed, save for drag coefficient, and we find that depending on drag coefficient, Fritz would have the most success with an initial velocity between 3.5 and 4 meters per second, and an initial angle between 47 and 53 degrees. This is reasonable considering that we estimated the initial or the final angle of the food with the ground to be between 45 and 50 degrees. So we conclude that these would be the optimal results for Fritz. Here we have our second set of differential equations where we are modeling this based on the X and Y position. And this is the differential equations that the previous model that John was talking about is based off of. So these equations are very similar to the kinematic equations you saw earlier for our first model. However, this time we're also looking at the X component of the model. So we, here we have a table where we are, there's five main variables that contribute to what Fritz's velocity and angle is going to have to be to intersect with the path of food. So that is drag coefficient, launch height, launch velocity, launch angle, and the mass of the food. Now in these two, uh, in these tables, we're looking at the different drag coefficients. And then in each of the three tables, the first one is looking at a launch height of 0 0.5 meters. The second one is one meter. And the last one is 1.5 meters. Now, what we found for the launch angle is that 45 is about the perfect launch angle for it to be thrown at because 30, it's going to be, Fritz is unable to intersect the path of food. And then at 80, he's also unable to intercept the passive path of food. So when it comes to his velocity, you'll see that as the drag coefficient increases, so does Fritz's angle he has to jump at, as well as for the launch height, he's gonna have to jump at a uh, bigger angle when the launch height increases. And here you can see a snippet of our code. All of the models were made in Python, and here, basically, what uh, is happening is you can input all of these different parameters that contributes to the angle and velocity that Fritz needs to jump at. It takes this and finds the velocity and the position of the food. And then from there, it is able to solve the ordinary uh, differential equations. Now, in terms of structural limitations, first, this model does not account for the motion of Fritz's head outside of the plane of his owner throwing the food. While it is useful to reduce Fritz and the food to two dimensions, it does eliminate some complexity, which could be useful in more accurately modeling the situation. When the, through, when the food is thrown more sideways relative to Fritz, there is an additional degree of difficulty added where Fritz must pivot his body that is not accounted for in this model. On top of this, multiple values were taken from a frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the video, which is, of course, a limited perspective and cannot be as accurate as having physical measurements. In the future, we would also look to incorporate a third axis into our motion model, making it three-dimensional, which would allow for a more accurate simulation of motion. And lastly, we would just like to say a big thank you to our coach, Seth, and to the judges for their time commitment. We appreciate you taking the time. Have a nice day.